So we've got the battery voltage, as you can see, in 230 volts. So it works with this battery. Excellent. Right, so this is what I've been testing with since I originally built this uh, Apexian box. So uh, here's the uh, 48 volt inverter here. This is an EA Sun one, and uh, this is the one that I've been using. Uh, we're getting about 360 watts in at the moment, which is uh, pretty amazing, bearing in mind how dark December was in the UK, especially in the South for me. Uh, I've put together this little t distribution uh, sort of setup here, really because this uh, inverter has uh, a 6.2 kilowatt output here. This is the output here. So the AC output is almost double what was on the 24 volt version. And if you want to watch that video, it's uh, being suggested in the top corner right now. So uh, I set this particular one up so that I had two separate uh, circuits, if you like, running off this one uh, output here. So I've got two 16 uh, amp breakers. So they're just MCB, so uh, mini circuit breakers here. Uh, on 16 amp for each of these plugs individually. So I can run things in split load almost from this uh, particular inverter. Uh, real game changer this has been actually, I've noticed, because I've been able to do pretty much everything uh, in the kitchen, including sort of running the dishwasher whilst cooking dinner and uh, also uh, boiling the kettle or making myself a coffee with my coffee machine. So in terms of the Apexian box itself, uh, it's been pretty much flawless. There's been no issues with it whatsoever. Um, we've got a bit of solar coming in, nowhere, nowhere near enough what I need. And unfortunately I've had to charge off the grid a lot, which has not really been great. But uh, so far so good. I've obviously set it up so that it's easy to uh, work round. I've put the uh, cables underneath again purely for the testing purposes which has worked pretty well and then the uh, cables run all the way round as in the battery cables to the inverter and they run underneath and they come out here. So uh, the box itself has been working brilliantly. I'll show you the app uh, in a minute but in general terms I can pretty much run what I like on this up to obviously the 6.2 a kilowatt limit of the AC output. Uh, I've got the um, same setup again, it's pretty much the same box as the 24 volt version. So the PV comes in there, obviously I've marked up the uh, positive on there. I've got the two battery cables that I showed you when I was uh, just finishing off the setup build. And uh, I've just used some uh, six millimeter squared twin and earth cable here. I've put a little bit of heat shrink around there just to keep it sort of neat and tidy and that so uh, it doesn't get pulled and the cables aren't sort of individual because I've had to strip it back so that I can put the um, earth sleeving on and actually connect up the earth there as well. So one thing that I have omitted from this or taken off what I was using on the 24 volt version is the Wi-Fi dongle. So the reason I've taken this off is because I've actually gone and got myself an Orange Pi uh, 3 LTS um, and I'm actually trialing out uh, using solar assistant. So that actually connects up there in the COM port. It comes around here. I'm going to cover this in a later video because I've only just really got this and I'm just sort of working out how to use this in conjunction with home assistant for automation as well. But that's a much bigger topic. I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on with this. And then that obviously connects into the COM port, which is why I can't obviously connect the Wi-Fi dongle now and then the other cable which I had to sort of make myself connect straight into uh, one of the RS485 ports so I can actually get battery information so I'll just show you a quick snapshot on screen and this actually just gives you a quick show of what I'm actually getting in today so this is purely a snapshot it's not a live image as you can probably see so what I'll do now is I'll just go over and show you what the uh, app looks like for the Apexian box. Right, I've just fired the app up on my phone. So uh, the password is admin. Uh, this is the general password anyway. And it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six ones. So uh, let's log into that. And then we have the device has come up now. So this is connecting obviously via Bluetooth, which is uh, on the BMS. So we click onto that and that should take us in. 
Okay, so you might have seen this uh, before if you've seen other videos, but very similar and obviously um, much like the um, set loss, because again, a lot of this stuff is just rebranded for this. Um, I've not had an opportunity to really um, charge the battery up full to get the true rated capacity. Um, as you can see, it's got a number of cycles there, but I've been cycling at quite low state of charge. But in general terms, you can see all the information that's on there. You've got an alarm and obviously protection uh, piece at the top. Uh, I've got remaining capacity as well. And obviously number of strings is down to the uh, number of cells because it has 16 cells in the box. Uh, battery type is what, what you'd expect, uh, lithium ion phosphate. So we termed on here as LFP. Uh, I've put in the, the nominal voltage or sorry, the nominal capacity of 300 amp hours. Uh, it gives the current port voltage, as you can see. The min and max in terms of uh, the voltages for the uh, cell pack. Temperatures, as you can see as well. And also you've got um, the inverter uh, can, so that's the CAN bus connection, which is, I don't know if you'll see that on there, but it's right down here. It's right down there. And uh, the obviously the uh, 485 connectors, which you can connect up uh, other battery boxes, which I've got one literally should be arriving this month to double up capacity on this. So I have two boxes connected in parallel. And again, I'll follow up with another video. And then at the moment, it's just got single device. So you can click on device detail. And as you can see, it gives you a breakdown of the, the max uh, and min voltages and obviously the temperatures as well from the temperature sensors. If you've uh, watched the build video, you'll know where they've been put uh, inside the box. And uh, you can just obviously scroll up and down. It's got the marked um, inverter type, sorry, the, the um, marked voltage differences there as well as high, low, and obviously the temps as well from the different temperature sensors. Uh, down there as well, you've got uh, manufacturer info, you've got the part number as well, software version and software protocol. So let's go back into the other one. So you can also set the parameters on here. Um, I'm not going to cover this uh, in detail, um, but um, if you've seen uh, the off-grid garage um, with uh, Andy on there, he's covered a lot of these and uh, the wording on this um, from the um, set plus perspective. Again, this is just a rebadged version of it. There are so many settings that you can reconfigure in here to your heart's content, but um, the uh, language needs a bit of uh, getting used to on that. Uh, but again, I'm hoping that's something that's going to be uh, helpful with using Solar Assistant. So if we go back on here and then we've got switch setting on here as well. And again, there are, are loads of different options on there to what you can turn on in terms of alarms and uh, states that change as well. So uh, there's a loads on there that you can get yourself uh, into and obviously you can edit. So if I edited it in the top corner, um, the password again, I think was, I've got to remember what it is now because I haven't done it on here for a while. Uh, I think it might just be four ones. No, that's wrong. Let's, let's try six ones then. Okay, so the password is just six ones as it was before. So uh, that's the basic outline really of what you get in the app. And again, you've got to be within range to really use it. Um, hence the reason I'm um, trying to use it now with Solar Assistant, which I'm hoping is the game changer that I've seen it and um, experienced with it so far. So um, that's really the app set up. Um, and again, there's so many components in there that you can change and move about. But uh, I'll leave it there for the moment. If you do have any sort of questions on this, and again, um, check out Andy's uh, videos on uh, the Off Grid uh, Garage uh, site, or not only the site, but also his YouTube channel. Very, very useful information on that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you a fairly large load test on this, just to give you an idea of um, how it copes and the fan noise as well. Time to test now. I'm just going to put a fairly big load through it now. So. Uh, up to about five uh, kilowatts. So I've got my uh, two kilowatt uh, heat gun, which I'll put up to full power. And I've got my trusty old uh, three kilowatt fast boil kettle. So I'm gonna put those through. I'm also running the fridge off of this at the moment as well and various other bits and pieces. So um, let's just have a quick look through to see what we've got in terms of load. So load watts at the moment is coming through at uh, pretty minimal, so uh, not much going on there at the moment. Obviously, we've got solar in uh, coming in at the moment as well. 
Um, so let's just see what we've got on the uh, front screen. So we've got almost about nine amps coming in at the moment and the static charge coming up to about 40%. So uh, time to switch on now and show you what it's like. So we'll start with the kettle and I've got, oh, sorry, I should have mentioned as well, I'm running them off two different plugs. So uh, I'm not trying to run five kilowatts through one because obviously that would blow one of the fuses in one of these uh, extension plugs. So I'm running them off of the separate ones and the, this is the reason I actually set this up like this in the first place. Right, so we are at uh, 20 odd watts, so let's get going. So kettle's on. So 2.71 has been registered in uh, kilowatts on that. So now I'm going to switch on the two kilowatts. So what we've got coming in out of that. So we've got about four, showing about 4.6 kilowatts coming in on that one. So let's see what we've got on here. So it's drawing about 83 amps at the moment. You can see where the voltage has obviously gone down because of the amperage that it's drawing. So not too bad. It is quite noisy obviously because I've got the uh, heat gun on as well at the same time. But in terms of the fan noise itself, again this has got really quick adapting fans on it. The other ones, you can see that right on there and there. It's got really quick adapting fans on here so it works out the load. Pretty much like the 24 volt version. But again, this is what I do and all. So with this kind of load on in the evenings, I would actually be cooking using my two kilowatt induction hob as well. Obviously not going to this extreme, but yeah, getting into the five kilowatt range. So I'll just switch that off now. And as you can hear, the kettle's still running. So I'll let that finish boiling and then probably hear the fan noise go down. So let's see what that's drawing. So that's drawing about 45 amps at the moment. And again, the noise of the fans, I've kind of got used to it to be fair, is not too bad. But again, this is just a testing mode setup. So I can just run it and test, and it's been very, very good so far. So I can't wait for the second battery to turn up. So that's coming near its boiling point now. So it's still showing about 2.7 kilowatts. It's obviously fluctuating a bit. So I don't think the fridge's uh, compressor is on at the moment either. So we haven't got the extra load from that. It's just coming to the boil now. And that's dropped off. And you heard the fan noise drop straight back down again. And as you can see as well, the voltage has uh, recovered on the battery shown on the inverter. So yeah, we're in good shape. So it's just a quick and rudimentary sort of uh, load test there. And again, it's been running perfectly with dishwasher on, even the washing machine, <laughs> fridge, and also cooking my dinner. So, so far, so good. That's it for this uh, sort of quick update video now. I'll cover off the uh, solar assistant, also working with the automation in home assistant. That's a bigger video. And I'll also cover off the next battery box once it arrives, because uh, I'm doing something slightly differently with that. I've got an extra component I'm gonna add, and people in the UK will know uh, once I've added that to uh, the reason for it. So uh, there we have it, so far so good. The 48 volt EA Sun Inverter has been working perfectly. Um, I've not had any trips so far yet with my little uh, sort of distribution setup that I've got there. Um, everything has worked flawlessly. So now it's moving on to the next level with Solar Assistant. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just pop them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Da Vinci.